Hello, and reporting from the Grand Canyon North Rim Village. Uh, we came to the village and got gas. There was full service gas that's less than what we pay at Costco at home. The guy came out and he washed the windows and he filled up the van. I think it was $80 and we were empty. And he could. So then we came into the village and after we got gas, uh, we found there's a laundry. So Lily went and put all the stuff in the washing machine and it's now in the dryer finishing up. There is a campground here in the North Rim, but I could not get uh, any reservations here. That's why we're outside the park a little bit in the Lote campground, which is nice. And, um, but in the campground here, they do have a dump and water. So I went ahead and dumped all the gray and the black and filled up with water. So we have gas, water, empty tank, clean clothes, and uh, we only have a couple days left. So actually, we, because we kind of figure that it's like every four or five days, we sort of have to have some civilization to get uh, the van rejuvenated and things. But we could probably stretch it to a week, but that'd be okay. So. We're just waiting for things to dry. We're going to go do the Bright Angel Point hike, and then also the Coconino Overlook hike, but uh, and then back to the um, campground, same one that we were at last night, and then we canceled the following night, and I rebooked Thousand Trails in Sedona for tomorrow night, I mean, tomorrow night and the next night in Sedona. So we kind of changed it up a little bit. Should be fun. I finally found a way that I can keep up with Lily. Her with the sore knee is the same speed as me, fully healthy. So Bright Angel Trail, just outside the visitor center, North Rim, coming up on Lookout Point, and should be gorgeous. So by the rim, these are like cabins you can rent. Then there's like a big resort, a cool thing you can hang out here and watch the sunset or sunrise. Okay, rounding the corner, Bright Angel Trail at the southern terminus of the North Rim Trail. It's been a little bit longer than I thought it was going to be. This is like a quarter mile, but I've been walking a while. Twists and turns and ups and downs. The Bright Angel Point Trail follows a skinny peninsula of rock and at one point crosses this bridge. It's actually about 5,000 feet or about a mile down on each side. It's pretty scary to cross. I don't know if it comes through in these videos, but it's 
quite intimidating to go across this bridge. And as we were walking through this, we came across several people that were just mortified and grabbing onto the rocks on each side and really afraid just of the, the height and trying their best to get their get themselves all the way out to the point but the height was just really playing with their mind and they were terrified then there were other folks that seemed completely comfortable with the whole situation they were climbing around on the rocks and seemed to be having a great time and didn't seem to be bothered by the height one bit Hello and welcome to John Wesley Powell Theater. Let us join this war hero and explorer, famously one-armed, on a typical evening campout with his crew. The day I lost my arm, the enemy cannon were firing overhead. But do you have to buy your shirts like at a special store or something? Well, I feel you're concentrating on my shirts a little bit too much. Um, the cannon were firing over my head. But didn't you have them specially made for you or what? No, actually I just buy a regular shirt and I fold up the end. That seems kind of wasteful. Why do you waste a whole sleeve? Well, look, can you imagine how much that would cost to have a custom shirt made? No, but I mean, this day and age, most shirts are made custom anyway. And with all the uh, amputations happening, seems like it would be a good market. Oh, forget it. Okay, here we are at the trailhead. This is the Kaibab, North Ka Kaibab Trail. And we just parked the van in the parking lot that's through the, you can see through that sign. Took a couple pictures, got our water bottle, some snacks, and we are going to, hey, look babe, free, free stuff. And we are going to go to the Coconino Overlook. These are big steps. My, my word. No bicycles, no pets. When mules are present, stand quietly to the side. Follow mule guide's instructions. Okay. Hello and welcome to Hiker Mocking Theater. Let us join this couple as they laugh and mock at the hikers below. Look at those people walking down that steep cliff for no apparent reason. I know, and I think the one person has a limp. Why do people do that? I'll never understand it. Utterly ridiculous. I don't think they're ever going to make their way back. Word. Coconino! So we can tell, we see evidence of lots of mules uh, traveling this part. I don't want to tell you what the evidence was, or is, but let's just say it's all over the place. 
for what it's worth. I'm sorry for everything. And uh, hard to miss, hard to not step in. And so they, but the mules do that in the morning. More like midday, I don't know. We we're kind of towards the end of the day. It's about almost five o'clock and the you know, sun is on the other side of the mountain. We're kind of uh, east facing over here. And it's a pretty straight downhill all the way, 0.7 miles to Coconino overlook over rough territory. Luckily, I have my appropriate footwear, sports sandals, which, uh, you know, can conquer any terrain and any kind of weather. <laughs> and uh, have a positive outlook, backpack full of snacks and water, and a dead cell phone. And a watch that's not happy because it can't attach to the internet. But other than that, everything's great. So we'll see you at the Overlook. Making it. You're doing great. Okay, so we just came up this, we're down this trail, and we're not going to go that that way, because we are at the Coconino Overlook, 0.7 miles from the parking lot. It was all downhill and not too bad. I bet we're going to be huffing and puffing on the way back up. We need to scramble over these boulders a bit to get to the bottom. That'll be no problem for us experienced hikers. And then I'll casually walk to the edge of this boulder here and then stop short. Oh God. Oh my. Woo. Woo. Dang. Wow. I'm glad we did this, babe. This was worth it. Because of her knee, we almost said, well, I tried to get her to not go, but she wouldn't have any of it. Look at this beautiful blue jay there. Oh, are we invading your peaceful afternoon? Hmm? Sorry, man. We'll be leaving pretty soon. Look at, you just take a wrong step and you just shoo. This is all gravelly and you take like, this is all gravelly and you take like one wrong step on there and you slip, you just go right off. Like those crazy dreams where you're like trying to scramble back up and you just keep slipping and then whew, off into no, nothing. Hey, buddy. <laughs> He's really cool. No? Hmm. Okay. You're supposed to say charge. Early the next morning. <laughs> okay, it's um, like day six or something. Day six of our trip. Grand Canyon, the wave and all that. We're leaving Demote Campground, which I realized how it got its name. There's a campground right by the North Rim, which everybody wants. And if you can't get that, you get demoted to this campground that's sort of outside the park. It's called Demote. And uh, 
we are leaving. We spent a couple of nights here and uh, had a wonderful time. It was actually a really nice, quiet, beautiful spot. And we're heading to Sedona and do a few things there. It's 106 miles to Chicago. We got a full tank of gas, half a pack of cigarettes. It's dark and we're wearing sunglasses. Hit it. Scenic view. Okay, so we're coming up on, what is this called, babe? House Rock House, Overlook. House Rock Overlook, because House Rock Road is also 1065, which is the one that we drove twice, 20 miles up and 20 miles back, all dirt road, and I'll show you the road. So this is 89A, going through Marble Canyon. Not towards Page, but we're not going to go to Page. We're going to make a right on regular 89 to head south to Sedona. And that long road there. And we were stopped this little, this little uh, pull out. And the uh, road 1065 that we rode 20 miles up and 20 miles back, the dirt road, which was quite rough in some places, is right up through that. Trim. Then we met these nice people from Quebec. Traveled 7,000 miles here and are doing all the parks. Zion Bryce. We're here at Cliff Dwellers off 89A, heading towards Marble Canyon. We thought we'd pull off to the side and kind of check out some of these older rock dwellings that they have and some and some Indian jewelry and things like that. Interesting stop to take a breather. 89A South going towards Sedona. We're about 15 miles. Sedona. We just passed Coconino Campground and we're going through this canyon where the speed got really low and I didn't really know why we were only going 20 miles an hour and then I realized, wow, this is a really wide distance canyon and kind of pretty. <laughs> 